Hello there and welcome back to the Geodynamics Lectures on Heat Conduction and Heat Production. In this video lecture we're going to talk about heat conduction. Our goal for the lecture is basically to introduce heat conduction and how we represent heat conduction mathematically. The basic idea is probably already something that's familiar to you. It's shown um, in kind of simple cartoon-like form here as an animation that shows vibration of, of some atoms in a crystal lattice, for example, and their red color indicates a more um, rapid vibration or more thermal energy, and you can see that by vibrating, the neighboring atoms also begin to vibrate, and heat is conducted in that manner. It's essentially an atomic scale heat transfer process. And it's something that's well described by um, a set of laws known as Fourier's laws that are the basic mathematical relationships that describe diffusion. Fourier's first law is something that states the flux of heat in a material Q is directly proportional to the temperature gradient. Now, that seems like a relatively simple statement, but I've, of course I have a question for you and you can take the opportunity to pause the video and think about this for just a moment. What would this relationship look like mathematically? So if we say that the heat flux is directly proportional to the temperature gradient, what would that look like? What kind of terms would you have in an equation like that? So go ahead and pause the video, maybe even write something down to take a guess and then come back when you've got your guess. Well, let's see, shall we? In one dimension, the translation into mathematical terms of heat flux is directly proportional to the temperature gradient in a material is something that looks like this. We would have Q, our heat flux term, equals, is directly proportional, to here is the thermal gradient, dt, dy, and in this case we have a term out here in front that's k, and that's where this proportionality thing comes in. It's directly proportional or linearly proportional. Of course there's a constant then out there in front of dt, dy. Here t represents temperature, y would represent depth in the earth um, in the cases that we're going to consider, and so dt, dy would be the change in temperature with depth or the thermal gradient. K is a proportionality constant that's known as the thermal conductivity. And Q again is heat flux. Well, we have already a second question in this lecture, so again, an opportunity to pause the video and think about this. And that is, why is there this negative sign out here in front of our equation for the heat flux? So go ahead, pause the video, and come back when you have an idea. All right, so why is there a negative sign out in front? Well, the idea, it turns out, is pretty simple, and that is that heat always flows in the direction of decreasing temperature. So that's why we have a negative sign. Heat's going to flow toward decreasing temperature. Now, the proportionality factor out here in front, this K, is called the thermal conductivity, and uh, what we have over here on the left side are the thermal conductivity values for various rock types and other uh, materials, just to kind of give you some ideas. Thermal conductivity is going to be typically given in units of watts per meter per Kelvin. And so you can see here that typical values for rocks are going to be somewhere in the order of two to three. And uh, you can consider an extreme example in terms of, of materials in the earth that occur in any significant thickness with salt, where you have values of uh, 5 to 7, and iron, for example, would have a very, very high thermal conductivity of 73. And then if you look down here in this schematic um, cartoon of some layers of rock, you can see here uh, a, a plot of a geotherm. So we have temperature along the horizontal axis, depth, along the vertical axis, and this line then would represent temperature in the earth across some thickness of sandstone, and then transitioning to salt layer here. 
And so you can see across the sandstone that on the same thickness, delta Z, temperature increases fairly significantly compared to the salt where the temperature increases much less. And that tells you already something valuable about the heat uh, transfer. When you have areas of high thermal conductivity, it tends to produce a high heat flow and low thermal conductivity produces a low heat flow. Or alternatively, if you have a high heat, con high thermal conductivity, temperature won't change very much across a given layer. Here's a picture of what heat flow looks like at the surface of the earth. The reason we're looking at this picture is that much of the heat that is transferred out of the earth's surface is done, um, or transferred toward the earth's surface rather, is done as uh, diffusion or heat conduction. And looking at this picture of heat flow, you can already identify that there's a relationship here between heat flow and the geodynamic setting. So if we look here, for instance, up in Northern Europe, in our shield setting, we can see that we have relatively low heat flow values. The same is true for shield settings like the northern part of Canada, much of Africa, and the central part of South America, where there's not much tectonic activity, and we have um, very old, stable continental interior. If you look, for instance, in the western United States, where we have active extensional tectonics, uh, we see high heat flow values there. We see high heat flow uh, over near Japan, and of course, um, along places where we have rift basins that are opening up as well as parts of um, Central Europe. And so we can clearly, again, see this relationship between heat flow and, uh, and the geodynamic setting. To give you some numbers, a global average heat flow is about 87 milliwatts per square meter. Continents have heat flow of typically somewhere 65 um, milliwatts per square meter or so, and oceans it's closer to about 100 milliwatts per square meter for the heat flow. All right, so that's it for our introduction to heat conduction. Time to take your quiz and come back for the next video lecture.